but I could tell things weren't going as well as he claimed. He tried to hide his feelings, but they only gave him away. The longer I listened, the more I kept wishing that I knew can you reach my friend? You're the only one who can. Lord, I know you love him. Help him understand. Can you reach my friend? You're the only one. I smiled when he mentioned your name. I said that I knew you. I told him the difference you made. But he never thought he would need you. But maybe he's changing his mind. Yeah, yeah. As we said goodbye, Lord, he told me that I. Something that he liked to find. So can you reach my friend? Bring his searching to an end. Lord, I know you love him. Help him understand. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you, Elder Wegar, for uh, the invite of coming into uh, the Brian Church, Brian family uh, here in, in, in Baton Rouge. What a pleasure to hear Sister Proche and hear about the family uh, who I appreciate from the bottom of my heart. I love, I, uh, we had some good times whenever they would come by Alexandria while, while I was pastoring there. And uh, many times they, they sang there at the church. Um, thank you, Doc, for the invitation and to your leadership team also uh, for allowing me to come into this platform of Zoom. Uh, greetings for those who are watching online also on Facebook. May the Lord bless each and every one of you, one of you. Can you reach my friend? I believe we all have someone that we want the Lord to reach, a friend, a family member, a neighbor, somebody. Lord, please reach out Help us to be the channel so that we can reach out to them as we look at these final days in which we live and Jesus is about to come. There are so many people 
so yeah. many people that we need to reach out. And so today I'd like to, for a couple of minutes, uh, share a message of hope and courage for each and every one of us as uh, we face these days in which we live in. Um, I want to set you up on the context of what we are about to uh, what we're about to read. I want to invite you to please uh, turn or open up your Bibles or turn on your Bibles with me to the book of Judges, Judges chapter seven, Judges chapter seven. Um, if you're there, please just uh, say amen through the chat. Say amen. If you're online, just raise your hands. Say amen. Just uh, do something. Do something. I know that the difficult thing about preaching on Zoom is that uh, you, you can see me, but I can't see you. And so somehow I need some type of interaction. Know that you are amen. with amen, me. Amen, preacher. Yes, We're yes, with you. Yes. We're with you. Yes, sir. We're with you. Yes, yes, yes. You can unmute and just say amen. Hallelujah. And just make sure that we are having a good time in the Lord and the Holy Spirit is blessing us, touching our hearts, uh, transforming our minds as we move and dive into the word of God. Amen. Amen. So Judges chapter 7, Judges chapter 7, if you're there, please hold on to that chapter right there. I just want to set you up in the context real quick. God's people have been under um, the powers of the Midianites for seven years. The reason why you can actually find it in verse one of chapter six, and that's a homework. That is a homework. I'm going to leave you a couple of homeworks uh, today. So uh, after we finish tonight or during the week, whenever you want to do it, you can go back and check it out. But verse one of chapter six actually gives us the reason why um, they were under the hands of the Midianites. And that is because they had once again, they had abandoned God, and and this is a constant. Uh, someone said that the uh, the spiritual life of God's people back in the Old Testament and still today, it's a reflection many times of us today. is like a roller coaster. Uh, we have high moments, but then we also have some very low moments. And 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 then at this very very low moment, they had gone away from God. They had turned also to instead of there the true God. They have gone. They they have gone. Uh, before or they had ran after Baal and some other gods and and they had abandoned God and so uh, once you do that you know God once you run away from God it's hard for God to really uh, 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 you know protect you the way he will love to and so we end up many times just uh, letting the enemy take control and and so the Midianites during seven years, for seven years, um, they 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 took over and they were they, they were dominating uh, God's people in such a way that they would invade their land whenever they were ready to pick up their crops and they would take everything from them, and so one day God decides to show up to a great man of God. His name was Gideon. Say Gideon. I'm going to use you to liberate my people. And Gideon uh -huh. wasn't so sure, you know, Gideon wasn't so sure. Gideon had a couple of questions. In fact, Gideon tested God. And um, keep that in mind because that, that's going to be a key for today. He tested God. He, he, he gave them a little, uh, uh, some, some tests and God, and God came through during those tests. And he convinced Gideon that God, you know, that God was going to use him. But God asked him for a favor first. God said, listen, before we go and do this, I need you to go and destroy all the bales that are among my people. It's incredible. Uh -huh. Think it's incredible to think, but God's people had erected a, 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 a stone gods and and of of stone of, of wood or whatever, and they had sanctuaries where they where they were worshiping Baal. And and, mm. and God said to Gideon, Gideon, I'm 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 going to liberate my people, but before I do anything, we need to take care of this. We need to. Yep. Do Oh, these 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 false gods, right? And so and Gideon in the middle of the night went and destroyed them. And and at the following day, everybody knew that Gideon had done this and they wanted to some way punish him. And while they were while they were there trying to reason and, and trying to find a way what to do to Gideon, uh, actually some reasoning came upon some of them and, and, and actually one of them came up with this great, great uh, question. He said, well, uh, think about this. If these were real gods, why didn't they, why couldn't they defend themselves? 
Uh-huh. <laughs> and, and, and that question kind of kind of picked up on the minds of the rest of the people say, well, well, that's true, right? If these if these are real gods, why why did Allah, why, 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 why couldn't they defend themselves? And so, and so for a little moment there, a little revival came among God's people. And, 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 and so God was not ready, you know, to use um, his people and, and, and to, to deliver them and use Gideon to deliver them uh, from, from, from the enemies, in this case, the Midianites. So Keep that in mind as we move to chapter seven, because now, you know, uh, Gideon has tested God and God has proven that he's going to do it. And God has tested Gideon by destroying the Baal. So now everyone is ready to go to war. And so here comes chapter seven, here comes chapter seven. And so verse one says, verse one says, then Jerubal, who is Gideon, and, and, and a fun fact for those who don't know, Jerubal is the nickname that they gave to Gideon because he had contended against Baal and they and he had won. Uh -huh. And so after that, because he fought against Baal, because he destroyed, you know, those idols or whatever, they gave him that nickname, the one who, who, who contended against Baal and won, the one who fought against Baal and won. So they gave him this nickname, Jerubal, Jerubal. So then Jerubal, who is Gideon, and all the people that are with him, were with him, rose up early and pitched beside the well of Herod, so that the host of the Midianites were on the north side by the hill of Moreh, in the valley right verse mm -hmm. two, this is key verse two is very key and the lord said to gideon and who the lord said to gideon the people that are with thee are too many yes. for me now, mm -hmm. now now i want you to remember who is speaking in chapter in verse two is god right god is saying the people that are with you gideon are too many for me, that is key, that is key, mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. me to give the Midianites into your hands. Mm -hmm. So right away, the first thing that God is letting Gideon know is that, listen, this battle, it's me who's going to win this. Uh -huh. Are you with me, church? Gideon yes, says, sir. God, God says, listen, Gideon, it's me, 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 me. I am the one who's going to give you your enemies. I am the one who's going to put them in your hands. It's me. But God has a problem here because God is telling Gideon that he is he, he has too many people that 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 <laughs> that Gideon kind of he's not finding the logic to this and actually humanly speaking uh, it's hard to find the logic that God is trying to implement here because God is saying listen Gideon the people that are with you are too many for me to give your enemies or put your enemies into your hands. And here's the reason, here's the reason why God is saying this. Lest Israel vaunt themselves against me saying, my own hand has saved me. Now, let me put you into context for a minute, because you will find this in chapter eight. The, the, the Midianites, their army were around 135,000 men. Are you with me? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. 135,000 men against God's people, God's army, which at that moment, we'll see in just a few minutes, they were only 32,000 men. Mm. <laughs> so, so, so you have 32,000 men who are going to fight against 135,000 men. And God is saying that the 32,000 are too many. Mm. <laughs> um. I don't know about you, but it doesn't sound logical, right? Especially, especially, and then this is this is the beauty about the word of God. When we read the word of God, read it again, read a verse once, twice, just just dive into it and 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 look at the beauty and what God is showing in just one text. God is saying, Gideon, or let me just say it this way: if God is saying that He is the one who's gonna deliver his enemies. Mm -hmm. The question then is, the question then is, why does it matter if there are too many or too little? Are you Come on, me? preacher. Are you with me? Yes, sir. If, if God is saying, if God is saying the, 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 the people that you have is just too many for me to deliver, I'm, 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 I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask the question. I'm going to say, hold, hold on, God. If you're, gonna, if you're the one who's going to fight this, 
because you're telling me that you are the one who's going to deliver my enemies into my hands. Lord, why, why does it matter if we are 32,000 or because actually, Lord, we are like one third of everybody else. It makes no sense. Uh huh. It makes no sense. But let me tell you, church, let me tell you, church, we serve a God who does not think the way we think. That's right. God's that's logic right. is not human logic. That, that's why we need to be very careful sometimes when we ask God for things, because God may answer in a way you are definitely not expecting. God will answer in a way that it doesn't make sense. But here is where we need to learn from now to start trusting and obeying in the Lord. How the hymn says, trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. So said Gideon, Gideon said, oh Lord, what should I do? And then real quick, real quick, verse verse 3, right? Verse 3. Um, I think I jumped something. I think I jumped something. Hold on. I think I, I, I forgot something real quick here. The reason, the reason, the reason that God, the reason that God said that there were too many people was that at the end, the people were going to say that they had won the battle. You see, God knows us very well. Let me say that again. God knows us so well that he knows that we are just full of ourselves. Come on, church. To the point, to the point, check this out. Because God said, God said, God said, they're going to vaunt of themselves against me saying, my own hand has saved me. And here's the problem with us as human beings. It's, 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 it's all about me. It's, it's, it's second me and third me. We are selfish human beings. You see, today we say, man, if I had all the money in the world, <laughs> I would do so, you know, you come up with this big list. And, and, and what happens is that in the next couple of days, suddenly you get all this money. And now all the things you said that you were going to do, you're like, ah, uh, mm, I don't know. <laughs> we change as human beings. We change. One day we look ourselves among the mirror. We're like, oh, I, I, I look good. The next day you look at yourself and you, you're like depressed. You're like, oh, no. You know, one day we say something. The next day we say something else. God knows us. God knows that there's nothing more wicked, the word says, than the human heart. Because we change so much. And God says, check this out. God says, I am a jealous God. And I want this, I, not only I want, but I deserve the honor and the glory always. And God knew that if he would deliver his people with the 32,000 men, instead of giving God the honor and the glory, those 32,000 men were going to say, man, we, we, we bad. We are a bad army. Everyone should be scared of us because, man, we, we, we just that good. And God's saying, no, 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 no. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to go down that road. I know how this is going to end. And God says, uh, 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 this is a problem. So you are too many and I need you to reduce your army. And, and here comes the process of reducing the army real quick because of time. Verse three, now, therefore go proclaiming to the ears of the people saying, whosoever is fearful and afraid, let him return and depart early from Mount Galliad and there returned of the people 22,000 and there remained 10,000. Oh my goodness. You see church, normally real quick, normally before God's people will go to war, they had to proclaim this. In fact, not only this, if someone had just bought a piece of land, they could stay. If someone just, get, just got married, they could stay. And this would actually happen if, if, if someone was scared or, or trembling or, or, or was afraid, they could stay. But you see, here's the thing. Gideon knew that the Midianites were so, their army was bigger that he decided that he was going to skip this part. And God is saying, no, no, no. Go through the process and ask whoever is fearful and afraid, whoever is fearful and afraid, let them go back. 22,000 went back, 
10,000 remained, and here is Gideon now talking to God, and God says in verse 4, and the Lord said unto Gideon, the people are yet too many, bring them down into the waters, and I will test them for thee. And it shall be that whom I say, this shall go with thee, the same shall go with thee, and of whom whoever I say unto thee, this shall not go with thee, the same shall not go with thee. Church, check this out. 32,000, 22 left, 10,000 left. For God, they're yet, it's still too many. I don't know what Gideon was thinking, but I tell you what, I'm glad I wasn't Gideon because I would be like, Lord, I don't know if I'm going to do this. I'll probably be doubting by this point. And God says, it's still too many, take them to the waters. I'm going to test them for you. I'm going to test them for you. Let, let me tell you something, church. Let me ask you this question. If you knew that God was going to test you tonight, well, it's already tonight. Let's say if you knew that God was going to test you tomorrow, tomorrow God was going to test you, how would you live the hours of tomorrow? How would you live the hours of tomorrow? And normally I ask this question, I allow people to answer. I know we're on Zoom right now, but but I, a lot of people said, Pastor, I, I would I would spend the hours praying and fasting. I, I, you know, we, we would be, if we were aware that God was going to test us tomorrow, we would be living at every moment just in, in prayer and, and, and aware of, of if, if, oh, is this a test? Uh -oh. Is this a temptation? Let, let me be, let me be careful. Let me be careful because, because we want to make sure that we are found faithful. But let me tell you, let me tell you a secret. God is testing you and me today without even knowing. You see, that's the beauty about God. God is testing his church today. Because at the end of the day, there's a beautiful verse that says that many are called, but only a few will be chosen. And that's actually the process. That is actually the process that's happening now. What's going to happen with Gideon and his army is what's happening today. You see, God is testing us with simple little things. God is testing the church with simple little things. The way God tested this uh, the, the army was by drinking water. Oh, my goodness. Mm. Come on, church. You know, have you ever heard? I've never heard this phrase, but, you know, we could make this phrase up by, by saying you can test you can test the character of a person by the way they drink water. <laughs> mm. Come on, preacher. Uh, I know, I know there are other phrases that they use, you know, you can test, you can see, you can see, you you, you can look at, at, at the character of someone, the way they, they have their shoes clean, the way, whatever, if they're organized or whatever, but check this out, the way God is testing his army is by so, the simples mean drinking water. Yes, sir. And here's what God is doing. You see, God, 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 God tells Gideon, Gideon. Whoever goes to the water and with their hand, they just go to the water, bring the water to their mouth and drink and move on. Those are the ones that I want. Mm. But whoever gets on their knees, this is a fun fact. Fun fact, write this down if you want. This is the only place in the Bible where getting on your knees is a bad thing. <laughs> mm, come on, preacher. <laughs> and here's what God is looking at. You see, those who were getting on their knees and, and you know, those who took the five minute break to just relax and chill and you know what, man, I don't know. What do you think about this? Uh, this, this, you think we should go? You think we're going to win this? Man, just, you know, they were, those who were just chilling, drinking water, you know, just taking a moment to, God said, I, I don't need those type of soldiers. I, mm. I need soldiers who, who did like the 300 who actually stayed, which were they, they, what they did. They, they took water in their hands and they brought it to their mouth. And then they moved on waiting for the next order. Mm. You see, they were focused. You see, they knew that they were on the battlefield. You see, uh -huh. they knew that at any moment the captain could make 
a, 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 a given order and they had to move right away. So they had no time to be chilling around. And uh, let me tell you, church, that sounds to, to today like help us, Jesus, help, help us, Lord, help us, Lord, because some of us today, today we are living, we are on the battlefield, we are living in the last days, and yet we're acting like if we have all the time in the world, chilling, talking about it, drinking water, and doing whatever we want. Help me, Jesus. Come on, preacher. And God is looking for soldiers. Yes, sir. Who are focused on the mission, who are ready for the next order, who are conscious that they're about to go into war, are they actually in war? And so only 300 men end up doing what God was expecting. And now God said, with these 300, we're going to win this battle. Uh huh, uh huh, uh huh. And Elder Weger, I don't know about you. But I tell you what, I'm, I, it's, I, it's, it's a good thing I'm not Gideon. Mm. Because I would be like, Lord, uh, let me go back home. <laughs> you know, I, I, and I say this honestly, church, because we, we sometimes or many times we talk a good talk. We, we, we know so much. But I've seen it in my life. I've seen it in, in the life of so many uh, Christians that when when the real thing, when when struggles, when 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 the winds of 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 of, of problems and and the storms hit our our way and and they slam at our doors and and things are going wrong and things are impossible and and just bad things are coming our way, I've seen myself and I've seen so many Christians simply doubt. Yeah. And, and we lose our faith and, and the things we boast about and the things we sang about and the things we talked about. Now, suddenly we, we, we question them and suddenly we, we're wondering, where is God? And suddenly we, we're thinking, I don't know about this. You see, it's easy because the circumstances of our lives can, can really shake us up. Mm -hmm. And we get weak, like someone just texted right there. Mm -hmm. And let me tell you this, God will allow, listen to this, please. God will allow the circumstances in our lives to get to a point where we believe that there is nowhere, there's no way out so that he can finally do something for us. In other words, many times we, after we have tried everything, we can only just look up to heaven and say, Lord, I'm in your hands. And you see, once we do that, once we have given up, once we have given up and we have surrendered to God, God says, yes, I, I, now I'm ready to do something for you. You see, because before, if I would have done something for you, you would have been selfish enough to believe that it was because you deserved it or because you were so good or because you're so faithful or because you're so talented or because you're just a hard worker. And God says, no, no, no. I want the glory and the honor. And I'm going to make sure that sometimes I will create the circumstances of your life to be in such a way that you believe there's no way out for me to finally say, okay, I'm ready to do something for you. Come on now. But let me tell you, it wasn't easy. It wasn't easy because Gideon doubted. I mean, why not? You have 300 men who are going to fight against 135,000 men? And yes, God said he was going to fight for us, but, you know, we sing about that. We, we say that God is on our side and if the Lord, but yet we doubt. Mm -hmm. You know why? Because as human beings, we can only see beyond our nose. We cannot see beyond our nose. You see, we, we cannot see the future, but God knows the future. Uh -huh. And God is wanting us to trust in him. But it's not easy. Faith is about faith is about just stepping into the unknown with the assurance that it's going to happen. But it's uh, it, it's not an easy thing to do. That's right. So check this out. So God does something for Gideon as we as we come to a close. Check this out. God does something for Gideon. 
And he says, let's go to verse, verse 10, verse 10, because Gideon is doubting, right? And verse 10 says, verse 10, if you're with me, verse 10 of chapter 7, verse 10 says, but if thou fear, mm -hmm. go down. <laughs> Am I talking to some? Am I talking to somebody who is fearful today? You know, it's it's okay, and the Uyghur, and it's okay to 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 be afraid sometimes. It's a human. Mm -hmm. You see, it's in our nature. It's okay to doubt sometimes. It's okay because you see, God knows that 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 we doubt. God knows that we are fearful. God knows that, and because He knows that, He will set us up in such a way that He will remind us. Yeah, he is with us and he will do it in mysterious ways. Verse, uh -huh. 10, verse 10 says, but if thou fear to go down, go thou with Phorah, thy servant, down, down to the host. Verse 11, and thou shalt hear what they say. And afterward shall thine hands be strengthened to go down unto the host. Mm -hmm. and and I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm just gonna tell you real quick what happens here. I'm gonna tell you real quick. You can read it later on because of time. But here's what happens. God tells Gideon, Gideon, I want you to go down to uh, the enemy's tent. I want you to get close because I want you to listen to a conversation between two guards. Two mm -hmm. And so, and so he goes with Fora, and he goes and and he gets close to a tent where they have two guards, two two Midianites, two enemies, talking to each other. The one is telling the other about a dream he had last night, <laughs> and the dream was about how this piece of bread rolled down and hit the tent and destroyed the tent, if not not mistaken. And and so the other one says, "Man, you know what that is? That is Gideon." <laughs> mm -hmm. that is yes, his sir. God who is going to mm -hmm. kick our behinds. Can, can I say that now? Uh -huh. <laughs> it's okay I say that. That, that what, 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 what that dream is that Gideon tomorrow is going to win this battle. Now check this out, church. God, God is amazing. God is amazing. God actually took Gideon to listen mm -hmm. from the voice of the enemies. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> from the verse of the enemies that God is in control. Oh my Lord. Yes, sir. Oh yes, my sir. Lord. And, he, I'm, and I'm gonna say something. I'm gonna say something that is that's gonna hurt us. This and sometimes it's good to reflect on things that, that are going on and we need to we need to we need to say them. But this is gonna hurt a little bit, but I think it's a necessary thing. Unfortunately, many times as as leaders, as members, right? Many times we cannot find encouragement within the camp. Mm, come on, preacher. And many times God will allow to hear it from someone outside the camp mm. to remind us that he is in control. Yes, sir. Uh... That's a word. That's a word. Oh my goodness! And here comes Gideon. He's now he's encouraged now because he, he has heard from the enemies the reassurance that God is going to deliver. Mm -hmm. And he comes up with this strategy, right? And he says, "Okay." He gathers the three the, the three hundred men. He divides them in three groups of a hundred. And how here is God's strategy? Here is God's strategy. God says to Gideon, Gideon, at midnight, you know, he gave he gave each one some trumpets, and he gave each one some empty jars. You know, he, he didn't give them swords. He didn't give them shields. He didn't give them anything that had to do with battle. Come on, preacher. Come on. Uh -huh. preacher. Uh -huh. I, if it if it couldn't get worse, it got worse because there are these three hundred men waiting for instructions, and they get a trumpet and an empty jar. But here's the difference between these three hundred: these men were focused. They were not questioning the leader. They were not questioning God. They were not questioning the church. They were not question. They were just ready to do because yeah. they had faith in God. No matter how illogical it sounded, no matter how crazy it sounded, they were going to be faithful to God. So they took the trumpet. 
it. They took the empty jars. Okay, what's next? Gideon, Gideon said, well, we're going to blow it at midnight. We're going to break the jars. We're going to lift up the torches. And then we're going to stand in our place because God is going to take care of it. Oh, my oh, Let me tell you something. If Gideon had, had done this with the 32,000 men, if Gideon would have said, listen, we're going to blow a trumpet. We're going to break the jars. We're going to lift up our torches. And we're going to stand in our place. Guess what was going to happen? Those same thousands of men who left before were going to leave anyway because they were going to be like, nah, man, this man is crazy. I ain't trying to die today. I'm going home. So God knew that. God said, I don't need these type of people on the battlefield. I need uh -huh. soldiers who will be faithful, who will stand in their place and watch me take care. Believe in me. Yes, sir. They blew the trumpet. Yes, sir. They broke the jar. They stood in their places, lifted up the torches. And the word of God says that the spirit of the Lord descended on the enemies, confused them, and they started to kill themselves. <laughs> they started to kill themselves. They thought that their, their, uh, their brother was their enemy, and so they fought among each other. They killed themselves. And then they ran away. Mm. And then the 300 went after them. You see... God, 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 oh my Lord, God, God, God is, God is an amazing God. But we need to learn to trust and obey. Amen. Two, we need to be focused and remind ourselves that we are living in the last times. We are living in the great controversy, the great conflict between good and evil, and we're in the middle of it. We don't have time to be chilling around. Yes, sir. We need to be focused and ready on the mission, telling others about the love of God, telling others about there is hope in Jesus Christ, preaching this message to my neighbor, to my family. I don't have time to just take 24 hours and dedicate it just for myself. Yes, we need time to work. Yes, we need time for family. But then we can also, if we would really want, we could take time and dedicate to be focused on the mission that God has called us to. Yeah. At the end of the day, God will win this battle. And he will win it with those, not so much that he has called, but at the end, those that he has chosen. Hallelujah. I pray that the Lord help us. Help, help me, Lord. I want to, I want to be found faithful. And I want to be among the chosen ones, standing on the promises of God and watching God deliver on, mm. my, on my behalf. Let me pray for, let me pray for you there, Heavenly Father, Lord. We need you now than ever before. We are living in such <sighs> turbulent times. And we need to be focused, focus on the mission, focus on who we are and focus on what you have called us to. We are soldiers on the battlefield. Yes. Pray, O oh Lord, that we may be able to be found faithful as you are testing us each and every day. Lord, at the end of the day, we will and we will want to give you the honor and the glory mm. because only you deserve it yes god thank you so much for speaking to our hearts through your word oh lord and help us each and every day to make that commitment to be faithful to you to hold on to you and see your deliverance come through in jesus name we pray Amen. 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 Thank you, Elder. Thank you so much for that on time Rhema word. If you've been blessed, beloved, on mute your devices and just shout amen, hallelujah. Let the preacher know that amen. you heard him amen. and that you've been blessed by this amen. word tonight. Amen. Blessings. Amen. Blessings. Amen. 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 Powerful word. Amen. Powerful word. Amen. Yes. Yes. Amen. You know what I like in that word, and I'm going to give you a preacher. What we do is we take a little time to discuss the word. And if you have to rush, 
No, uh, no, I like that. Amen, amen. Yeah, we appreciate you. Uh, but I thank you. Now, I told you all before, I only give him an hour and a half, if that. I mean, I was, I, I, I got a bad news from our a regular, uh, regularly scheduled preacher, and it was either him or me. You know, <laughs> I, I said, "Let me call Pastor Archibald," and he came through for us in in a very short notice of time. But that's that's what happens when you when you have a Gideon kind of man. But one thing that you said, Elder, that the Lord said through you that encouraged me was sometimes. And I want to say most times we don't get the encouragement from in the camp. <laughs> it's almost like we got to go outside of the camp yes, to get yes, a word of encouragement and how sad that is. And I'm just going to uh, uh, let other people charm in. What did you get? What did this word speak to you tonight? And how do you plan to use it? Preacher, you just stole my thunder with that thought. I, I was, <laughs> I, I was, I was actually going to uh, comment on that as well because, you know, what struck me when the preacher said that, I, uh, my mind ran straight on Christ mm -hmm. because that's how he felt. Yeah, you know, um, I mean. Look at him in the garden when he prayed, you know, Father, if it be possible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let this you know, and, and then when he was on the cross, yeah. he prayed the prayer, why hast thou forsaken me? Yeah, yeah. If he had fine encouragement yeah. in from the, the disciples, right, in the camp, <laughs> he would not have had those words would not have um, echoed from his lips because he would have felt that encouragement, that that motivation from the disciples, but they had forsaken him. Yeah. You know, and that's what I got from that. And I also, you know, I also want to say my heart was blessed Amen. With, 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 with that word. It started with Sister Prochet's yeah, 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 yeah. Special yeah, music. My friend. Yeah. My Lord, that's one of my favorite songs. I mean, I know my next door neighbors probably were looking to see what was going on in my home because I was just rejoicing as she was singing oh, that song. I just yeah. love and she sang that song, I think, better than the person that sang it originally. No, no, was, she didn't she, sing it. She's she sang. She yeah, sang. she's yeah, 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 yeah. So um, I want to thank I want to thank Sister Proche for that uh, special hey. music. You know, my soul was blessed, and the preacher for the word. You know, thank you. You know, this was a night that I I can truly say. You know, I mean, um, I needed this. Amen. You know, I I truly needed this, and and thank thank you thank you thank you. Amen. Anybody else? We got, we got, I think, six minutes. We want to try to end it in time. Pastor, I just wanted to say real quick a few things that I pulled out. Number one, we may have to make sure we remove all idols out of our life. God can't do what he really wants to do for us if we are focusing on another idol. That was the first thing. God is mm. going to win every battle. God's math is different from our math. Come on now. We don't need weapons because God is our weapon yeah, of yeah, yeah. destruction. He's going to yeah. take care of all our enemies for us. It made me reflect to when uh, the other week when someone tried to break into my house and I had no gun. I didn't grab no knife. God told me, don't go hide in the closet. Run to where you hear the noise. Now, the noise was scary. The man was trying to break down the door with a, with a, with a fence pole. He was trying uh. to get but he couldn't get in because God kept me secure on the inside. So that testing of my faith to trust God in that instant that he had, he already had protected me before. I couldn't see what the, was on the other side of the door. I didn't know if the person was going to shoot me or not, but I trusted God when the spirit spoke and said, move to the front of the house. Don't hide in the closet. I got you. And Amen. So, uh, Amen. This week on my uh, YouTube channel, 
it's about reflection. And so when he said, it's good for us to reflect, I said, come on, Jesus, confirmation. It's good to reflect on the goodness of the Lord. And he said it twice in the, uh, the word tonight, God is amazing. And so Amen. those were the things that I took away. Keep remember, Paula, keep remembering always, God is amazing. And he's going to do amazing things with math that don't make sense to you, but it's his math, the best That's math. Right. That's <laughs> Anybody else? Yeah, it's Elder Pro Shay. Uh, it's, it's refreshing to hear Archibald, and he and he kept it simple. You know that's yeah. what I like. And just just going on what Sister Paula said, that uh, uh, Pastor Archibald just going on what Sister Paula said. God uh, and and our Pastor Archibald brought that out that God's logic uh, uh, sometimes doesn't make sense. So yeah. so that's why you shouldn't trust your logic. But I don't yeah. know. I'm pretty sure somebody saw this too that throughout this thing, we had reminders of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, that Trinity. I don't know uh, if anybody saw this, but did you see the series of threes? Uh, we ended up, there was 300 men. Uh -huh. was broken up. was broken up into three groups. Uh -huh. And then the three groups used three simple weapons, a trumpet, pitcher, and a lamp. Uh, I, mem I remember preaching a sermon one time the acronym was SWAT, uh -huh. uh, and I had to stand for special weapons and tactics, or uh -huh. spiritual weapons, spiritual weapons and tactics. And uh, he used simple items. These weren't yeah. even weapons. It just yeah. goes to show you that God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit is always is always working on our behalf. And uh, I just appreciate that, and just keep on preaching it, uh, Pastor. Amen. 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 Anybody else? Yeah, I guess a simple conclusion, Pastor, is we need, there are times and certain situations in our lives where we need to stop trying to figure it out and just trust and believe that God's going to work it out. Come on and, now. And, Come and, on. And, and, and he will do what he does. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Stop trying to figure it out. Stop trying. You know, you, 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 you talking to me right now. Stop trying to figure it out. Stop trying to figure it out. Oh man, that's a word. Stop trying to figure it out. Yeah, he gonna work it out. He gonna work it out. Well, listen, we we I think we're on on the hour, the top of the hour. Uh, Elder Manuska, are you there to give us our benediction? Amen. And thank you again, Pastor Archibald. Please uh, tell your family we thank them for letting you come this way to share with us tonight. Thank you, Elder. Appreciate it. Amen. Amen. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for the vessel that you allowed for us to hear your word, God. Thank you for the discussion that we were able to have. I pray that we will apply this word to our lives, share it with someone else, and ultimately allow it to transform our heart, our mind, our soul, and our spirit. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you, everybody. Have a good night. Amen.